video, I want to show you how I do color work knitting when I carry one yarn in each hand. This is the caribou and snow mitten from my craftsy class that goes into more advanced techniques for stranded knitting where I use the same technique in more detail, but I'm going to show you the basics here. And I've just attached some yarn onto a swatch from that class, different colors so you can see what I'm doing now. And I just attached my second color and I'm going to begin knitting with two colors. So I hold one in my left hand and one in my right hand. There are many different ways to do this, but I'm just going to show you how I do it. It took me a while to learn how to tension with each hand. And I used to just throw the ball of yarn from my right hand on the ground to give it some, some space. But now I tension them in a more normal way. I put it around my pinky and my index finger. Now my left hand I tension in a very weird way because that's how my grandmother taught me. But you could also tension it with your pinky and your index finger. I just can't do that because I've been knitting this way for 50 years. Okay, so you get set up with one color in each hand. And let me move this out of the way so it's a plainer background. So we're going to just do knit 2A, knit 2B, A, B, A, B like this because it's good to practice if you've never done this before and there's no long floats and you don't have to worry about your tension so much. So we're going to just knit and I'm going to be using my left hand first. doesn't matter which one is in each hand so long as you're consistent because if you change, it will change the look of your knitting because one color might be a little looser than the other. But anyway, for picking, you insert the needle into the stitch the normal way and you just grab the yarn with the tip of the right needle and pull it through. So this will take some practice for those of you who are used to throwing, but there it is. It's almost like crocheting, except there's no hook. Okay, and now when I start working with my right hand, put the right needle in the stitch the same way because we're still making a knit and I throw it around the tip like that. So I, I move my hand more to make the yarn go around the tip of the needle. Okay, and I'm just going to do two, 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 two. And this is just practice. And you can do that and make some checks. I'm going to do two rows of this and then switch the colors. And that will give you some practice. And then we will go on to something a little more complicated where you have longer stretches of each color. So go ahead and practice that and I'll come back and show you what to do with longer stretches of each color. All right, you can see here I've done some rows of two, 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 just going back and forth, two to two. It's good practice because you don't need a chart. So after I do that, and after you do that, I recommend you do some rows with four stitches of each color and just make some bigger checks. This is a really great practice. You can do a whole hat out of these patterns and get some really good practice. So I'm in the middle of, of a row here. And I'm just going to keep going and show you what's different when you have more stitches of each color. The first thing is you want to make sure that they're not scrunched up on the right hand needle. So every time you knit more than two colors more and more than two stitches of a color, before I switch to the next color, I want to open them up on the right hand needle. That way it makes the float of the unused color longer on the back, which gives a looser tension and less tendency to pucker. So now I've done four on this hand and I'm gonna stretch it open like that. Nothing drastic, just open it up. A lot of times we tend to knit like this with all our stitches wadded up on the right needle, and sometimes it doesn't make a huge difference, but with stranded color work, it will, especially when you have more than two stitches of a color. So you wanna open that up and make it nice and relaxed. Now, here's another thing that can happen. You can get to the end of a, a needle and you have to do extra stitches of the same color. So here we're, we're going four, 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 but I only have two. And I don't want to make a float like this that goes across diagonally across the corner because that will pinch it in. It'll make my knitting piece come out too small. So I'm going to have to trap my 
unused yarn in the corner so it doesn't go diagonally across in a short float like that. So I will show you how to do that. So here we're knitting with the color in the right hand and I'm going to knit one. And now before I knit the last stitch, I'm going to think about what's happening. And I want to trap this yarn in the last stitch of the needle so it's stuck and trapped in the corner instead of draping across. So I'm knitting with the yarn in my right hand. So instead of just knitting, I'm going to pull the left hand yarn forward and knit. And then when I take that left hand yarn back, it crosses over and it gets trapped. Can you see that? How it's going to be trapped. It's kind of crossed and twisted with this yarn in my right hand. So then when I go and finish on the other side of my corner, I'm going to knit two more blue because I'm doing four, four, four. Whoops. You can tell I knit more with the yarn in my left hand because when the first stitch of the needle is done with the right hand, I have a harder time with that because it's not my main knitting hand. Okay, now I'll continue with the gold. And I'll show you what happened in that corner. Now, remember, always open it up a little before you go back. But now let's take a break. See how the gold, there's no float going across there? It's trapped inside that stitch, so it goes way around the corner like that instead of pinching. And that's the same if you're on two circulars or magic loop. Whenever you switch needles, you want to do something like that if you have more than two stitches again. So I'm going to continue here across this needle and show you what to do if you have more than four stitches and you're working with the yarn in your left hand. Remembering to loosen it up every time I switch colors. And it becomes just part of the rhythm of your knitting and it's not a big deal. You have to think about it at first because it's a new thing. Later it just becomes part of what you do. Okay, now I'm going to knit one gold and then before I do the last stitch I'm going to think about trapping. I want to trap the blue yarn. Well I can't just put my needle behind it because it's way over here. It's not in a good place. So we have to do this little process that I learned from the philosopher's wool, wool, philosopher's wool people in Canada. I love the way they explain it. It's, it's a standard technique but they explain it in a way I never forgot. They say pretend. So you pretend to knit with the yarn in your right hand. You pretend to knit with the yarn in your left hand and you unpretend. And now you've crossed those strands so when you knit with the gold the blue gets trapped in the corner. It's the same thing, but it's just a different motion. And it gets quicker as you go more, but the first time you do it, it's slower. But I always say pretend, pretend, unpretend to myself. Now see, that's trapped there right, right in the corner. And when I start knitting with it, it's not going to go from here to here, it goes around the corner. That's all you need to know for knitting with two colors for basic patterns, like this is my Arab American simple pattern. You never have more than two or three stitches of a color, but here on the sides is where you want to trap the yarn. And you definitely want to do it on more complicated patterns when you switch needles here, because if you don't, your sock will be a little too small if you have floats that go across those sides and don't let it open up flat when you put it on. That's it.